guys, it's Always Improving here and today I'm back with another video and today I'm going to be painting two different landscapes with acrylic paint. Uh, you can see here I'm using these Liquitec Basics acrylic paint and after getting out all my supplies, my palette, my canvas, and the paint themselves, I worked on the sketch and the sketch was really fun to do. Don't know why, I think I just was able to build forms really nicely and get in the shapes of the clouds in the picture and I don't know, it felt really nice. Um, after doing that, I moved on with base colors uh, for the painting, and this included the sky with a very light blue color that I think I might have added too much water to originally. Um, and then I did like a white, tan, maybe a yellowy color uh, for the stone of the mountain because I knew that it wasn't like a true white and I wanted to have that color shining through in any areas that I didn't want to put the last color, which is green, on top of everything. Um, by the way, the green, a lot of the green in the foreground was more vibrant and had more color variation than in the uh, background where it was darker um, or just one color overall. It didn't have a lot of variation and that was to create a really nice sense of depth within this image. Next, I moved on and kind of just put the clouds um, where they were so I just like I didn't add too much detail to them I just put some white where I knew that the clouds would be in order to create a stable foundation for the rest of the painting um, And by the way the this is my first time using the Liquitec basics um, I did show them off in my last video, but I actually made this painting the first painting in this video before I did my flower speed paint last week um, and I really like the Liquitex Basics. Um, I like how they mix. It's much different and much easier to mix them uh, compared to the Master's Touch that I was using before. And they also thin out with water so much better than the Master Touch. I feel like the Master Touch paints were a little bit too tacky and these paints are not like that at all and they dry completely different as well. Um, these Liquitex Liquitex, excuse me, basics, they dry matte, not shiny um, and not tacky at all. So I really like how these paints worked and how they uh, performed for me in this painting. Um, after I had gotten all the base layers done, I did go in and added tons of detail and tons of variation into those trees. It was actually really hard for me to really understand what I wanted um, to show through, like how much detail I wanted to show within those trees on the mountains, because it's really hard when you think about it, even the picture, um, you don't see like individual trees or like individual leaves on the trees or anything. You see a bunch of green shapes and it was really hard for me to take that not even super uh, detailed picture and then translate that into a painting and have it convey detail. Um, so I did struggle with that a little bit, uh, but overall it wasn't too bad and I was really happy with how that um, the mountain was turning out in itself and all the variation I could get. After that, I moved on to the clouds, which I had already added a bit of shadow to. Um, and the main thing I wanted to keep in mind for these clouds, I wasn't necessarily going to follow the reference exactly because clouds are organic and they're not going to be a specific shape. So it was okay if I varied from the reference photo. But again, the main thing I wanted to keep in mind was that there would be two highlights on these clouds, one from the sun and from like the top of the page and then the other would be more of a reflective light from the mountains so i tried to keep the shadow in the middle with having on either side a nice um, highlight white color shining through in the clouds and that really allowed me to create that form and to create that realism within this piece overall um, this piece was really nice and it was a fun introduction to landscapes and acrylic. Uh, I have done a couple others in the past, but this was the first time that I really looked at my reference photo and decided for myself what to do and how to plan. So again, this was a really fun process for me and I hope you liked that first painting. The next painting was quite similar to how it started. I just sketched out the landscape. By the way, I'm getting these photos from Noah Bradley. He is a photographer and an artist, and I think he even writes now, um, but his, um, his resource packs, he has a couple that are for free and they're really great. They have tons of photos uh, from like a, a, a 
ton of different European countries and I would really recommend them to anyone who's looking for nice reference photos. He also has some available for I think like five dollars for like humans uh like reference photo for people um uh, but I haven't looked into those so I can't vouch for them um uh, but anyways after sketching this out I moved on and really worked hard to get a gradient for the sky um and I did that just by adding a little bit of red into my blue because I had like a phthalo blue I think is what it is and I wanted it to be a little bit more purple for the top and then slowly fade into a lighter color as we approach the horizon I was avoiding certain areas when doing this because I really wanted the white of the paper to shine through for the clouds and for even like the lighter areas of the sky. I really wanted to um, preserve that white area and preserve that white color uh, so that it would shine through the paint even and create more vibrant paint colors later down the line. Uh, the grassy area, the hill I guess you would say, um, it was actually kind of hard to get that color that I wanted and I don't know why exactly, I think it was because it was a yellow but it was also like meant to be like a brown color and so it was a little bit difficult to balance the amount of yellow I had and the amount of brown color that was present within that like grassy area because it was like dead grass, you know? Uh, so that I did go over a couple of times. Um, and then I moved on into the clouds, which were really fun and nice to get the base layer, especially. I just kind of made it a gradient, like how I did with the sky, um, from a lighter color into a darker color. And this is different than my first, um, my first painting, because in the first painting, I went from a light to dark back to light again. But in this painting, I just went from a light to dark color, and it was actually really fun and enjoyable to paint. Like metal in my last painting, how I remarked that I liked to paint the metal, um, clouds are mostly monochromatic and I think this is why I enjoyed painting the clouds so much. I could focus on the values and focus on really building the forms of the clouds instead of focusing on the hue shifts like I had to do in the sky where I had to add like red to the blue to make it a darker color and to make it the right hue um, and how I had to add yellow to the grassy area at the bottom. Uh, the clouds really allowed me to get a different experience and just add white and black or white and maybe a blue gray if it was close but mostly it was really just one hue and I could focus on the value shifts within the paints so this painting overall was really fun for that reason alone um, but other otherwise I added let's see here so I did a lot of little details in the clouds you can see um, where there's like little streaks of clouds through the sky and I had to use a blue color for that. I had to use like a blue, um, a bluish white color because unlike watercolors, which is what I was used to, you can't just water down the paint to see the bottom layer shining through. And that was one area where I think I, I still need to grow my connection to acrylics because I really wanted to be able to do that. I really wanted to just be able to add a little bit of water and make it a nice transparent layer of white. But I realized like you cannot do that. So that was a little bit different for me in this painting. Um, also the trees, that's another area where I don't think, <laughs> I'm really not good at getting a bunch of details in my acrylic paintings. It's really hard for me to add like the, the leaves of the tree. Like I, I know you're not supposed to paint every single leaf individually. That would be, that doesn't even make sense. But like just trying to convey all that information, it's really hard for me. So the trees in both images I think are uh, a low point and one of my weaknesses in acrylic paintings. Otherwise, I really enjoyed painting this painting just like the first one. They were both really fun and a nice way to kind of introduce myself into these new paints and delve further into acrylic painting in general. Um, but I'm kind of curious, which painting do you like more? Um, personally, I don't think I could choose because uh, I'm a little biased in creating them myself, um, but I'm really curious to know y'all's opinion. So let me know in the comments down below. And otherwise, um, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye.